if we were to be able, by the power of God, to take away every oppressing thing, every oppressing demonic spirit, every oppressing thing in the world, you'd be doing backflips in place. You'd, you'd redefine Holy Roller. I'm telling you right now. Reality of it is, is God's made a way through Christ Jesus that we could live in such freedom and liberty, but people choose to live under their problems and all their issues. You make the choice. You make the choice to have all the things that are going on in your life because you hold on to stuff. You make things important that really aren't even important. The, what's really important is what you're going to be going through your thinking about five minutes before you die. That's probably the most, I mean, I'm, there's a better way to say it than that. What's really important is after you step over into the next slide, I mean, everything that is there. That's all that's really, all the rest, to listen, all the rest of these things that are going on do, really don't have a lot of value. Father, in his loving kindness, came to break us into reality. Jesus said, you'll know the, you'll know the truth or you'll know reality, and reality will set you free. you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. All of a sudden, you'll be, you'll be burden-free from all the things, all the things of deception, all the cares of this life, all the deceitfulness of riches, all the people, problems, relationship problems, because you didn't get what you wanted when you wanted it, problems. All of those, and listen, all those stuff, all those things keep you back from the, from the greatest and most wonderful blessings that could, <laughs> could go beyond all that can be imagined. Father has separated himself under the truth. He's not going to hang out in the lie. And he's invited us to come on into the truth. Father has separated himself into reality and he invites us to come on and get some reality because we've been living in deception way too long. People search act as though they were blind men trying to figure out where is the wall so that they can have their bearings and get some bearings. So you see, find a wall, now I got a bearing. Okay, now I know I'm going somewhere. What? And, and, and the Holy Ghost has come to lead us and guide us into truth. And, and guide us into reality. Guide us into all that is good. The Word of God lays out before us all that is reality, all that is true, all that is good. And yet we want to hang on to whatever it is we think is important. And it's stealing from you. It's robbing you. It's a thief. You know, people just say well, that Satan is the, you know, it's just all about Satan. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, you know what? He's just one of the thieves that people have let into their lives. How about, how about all the other thieves that you let into your life? Steal your joy. <laughs> you never, I don't care who you are, where you're at. I don't care how long you've known God or how little you've known Him. Uh, or how short time you know Him, how much you know of Him, how little you know of Him. It does not matter. The Holy Spirit has come to take us into a place where we can be full of joy, unspeakable. Hallelujah. He said, I'm, God said, I'll meet you in happy land. I'll meet you over here in joy and rejoicing. People, get, people live in prison. They live in a prison of, of their own creation. And it's time that you go ahead and begin to recognize, like Satan's not going to pull those tricks on me. Darkness, gonna, darkness aren't going to pull those tricks on me anymore. See, the cares of this life, deceitfulness, riches, and, and pleasures of this world will keep you from ever developing in all the good things that God has freely given to us as a free gift. And so today I, I want to just begin to talk to you about your waters being deep and your rivers running like oil. God said, I will make your waters deep, and I'll cause your rivers to run like oil. And you know, the prophet Ezekiel is prophesying when he says this, and he's really dealing with the issues of people, of, of his people finally willing to come and be a part of what he's doing in the earth. I mean, you know, it's like, it's a terrible thing. You know, uh, Satan comes, you know, accusing God one day, and once again, just slandering God, because that's all he can do, that's what he does. So there's nobody down there. There's no one in the earth that serves you. They're all serving me. And God's got one guy. <laughs> He's got one people. <laughs> he said, have you considered my perfect servant, Job, who's righteous in all of his ways? He's upright in all of his ways. And, uh, you know, God's got one, one person that he can claim in the earth. I, I pray that today there will be in this place more than just one that's going to serve the Lord, that's going to literally come under the rule of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died to open up the door for us to go into a place called holy, a place where God lives. It's, another, it's a synonym for where Father lives and for who Father is. He's absolutely everything other than separate from the world. He isn't going to partake of any of the lies. He's not going to partake of any of the deceit, and all the slander, and all the backbiting, all the confusion, all the stuff that goes on in everyday world that you could actually call a form of hell. You know, people want God to accept them the way they are. He's not going to do it. He can call you like you are and change you to be like him. Because if he accepted you like you and I are, heaven's going to be hell. 
Nothing's going to change. Somebody said, oh, we'll learn righteousness in this week. Bye-bye. No, it's now. Your heart's got to get changed. God said, I'm a, God said, I will circumcise work of heaven. I will circumcise your heart, Deuteronomy chapter 3, so that you will love me, so that you can know me, so that you can love me. And then Paul gives this wonderful shout out in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11 says that we've been circumcised with the circumcision of Christ, <laughs> having put off the body of sin. I mean, you know, come on, what liberty, the privilege of being filled continually. They don't want to be filled continually many times. Or they're just ignorant to it all. They hold on to things that keep them from all that God has for them. Or they even, worse than that, they cut themselves off from the supply of the Spirit as though God's going to come and pacify them and make a whole kingdom of God centered around whatever their issues are. He's not going to do it. He's, the Holy Spirit's come to teach us righteousness. Jesus came, opened up the door so we could step in to a relationship with Father. And more than just relationship, oneness. I mean, to get to come and sit at the table. I mean, more than just, you know, I, you know, I, got, I, got, a, I got a nosebleed ticket. You know, I'm way out in the back, back you know, <laughs> the very back seat of, of the program. No, Father's called every one of us to come into a place of union with him, to come and know his love. In a world that we live in it is a totally dysfunctional world. It's under the prince of the power of the air that is the spirit of disobedience. And I'm going to tell you, that impact is very forceful. It's, it will make demands of you. It will grab you. It will grab you by the hair and snatch you around. What more violent thing could I think of? And, and, and this force that comes at us, the Lord says, well, the only way to do it is to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. And now he gives us that. He gives us the ability. He gives us the privilege of being continually filled with the Spirit. That people want to be continually filled with their problems, their issues, their wants, their needs, their desires, their earthly vision. God wants a transformation. Jesus may, is the door that causes us to walk into a relationship with the Father so we can really know what's going on, so our eyes can be open. You know, Elisha's servant. He was all concerned because the press of, of the things that were around him because of the Syrian army and they were seeking Elisha's life. And you know what? He was going to, by default, be in the same you know, situation as Elisha because Elisha, he was hanging out with Elisha. And, you know, Elisha's not worried. And it's like the, the, the servant of the Lord says, well, how is it that you cannot be worried, you know? I mean, with all this stuff going on, how is it that you can't be worried? He said, because there's more with us than are with them. And the, the guy... and. He, he's, stuck in a, he's stuck in a world that is being manipulated and being orchestrated by the powers of darkness. And he's going, what on earth is your problem? Man, I'm telling you, I knew you were weird, but now it's verifiable. And the Lord says, open up his eyes and let him see. And he saw that this earth really is, really is the throne room of God in many respects. It's, it, you know, we, when... when uh, when uh, Jacob received a revelation from the Lord, his eyes were open in the night vision, and he saw uh, the throne of God. He saw Father, and he saw angels descending. And, and he said, here I am in the house of God, and I didn't even know it. And we know that one day that the uh, heavens will be snapped back like a scroll, and men will be able to look and see Father's throne about right where Jesus disappeared when he went up for the Mount of Olives, right there about cloud level. Uh, somebody said, well, I can't see nothing now because you don't have eyes to see right now. Uh, you know, Father would give, Father would give you eyes to see. Father wants to bring people into realms of visions and dreams and revelation, but they're so stuck in earthly possession. They're so stuck in earthly interest. Their eyes are so filled with the things that belong to this world. It blinds you. It blinds you. There is a prince in the power of the air, that, a spirit of darkness. That, it's a mind-blinding spirit. That hides the glory of the gospel. Not, not just at, the, not just at the, the point of not being able to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Because that's true. And that needs to be broken. But also, Satan will get in. The powers of darkness will get in wherever you're willing to turn away from the word and do it your way. Wherever you're willing to walk in your own spirit to the Holy Spirit, he'll blind you. And what happens is people say, well, Lord, forgive me. You need to confess your sin so that the blood can forgive you. So that the blood can cleanse you and the Lord can forgive you. You need to get out out of that thing you need to quit just acting as though father is going to um 
go ahead and accept you and you remain the same. No. When you call upon him, when you call out to him, he comes with miracle power and changes you. He takes you from glory to glory as you behold his divine power. People, you're going to have to be willing to take the next step with God and come under the rule of his word. And quit, being, and quit allowing yourself to choose for yourself what you're going to do, what you're not going to do, when you're going to be happy and when you're going to be sad. I like to be able to take people into training and help them understand how to recognize themselves. So as funny as it may seem, most people cannot recognize themselves. You go, my goodness, we're not that stupid, Pastor. Oh, yeah, you can't really recognize yourself. You don't know how. That's why you can't deny yourself daily and take up your cross. You, 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 when, you, when you feel sad, well, that's more than likely pure, unadulterated, 99.9999% self. When you upset at somebody, I guarantee you it's not the Holy Ghost. And that's 99.9. And there's never a justifiable reason. Of course, people will make it a justifiable reason because they like self-righteousness, which is to self-justify. I don't like self-righteousness. I like the righteousness of God, which he gives me in the blood of Jesus Christ by the life of Jesus. You want to live in this goodness of God? Father made a way for you and I to live in the life of Christ. He made a way for you and I to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit. He made that possible when the miracle work of salvation took place. John 3, 3, 3 John chapter 3 and verse 3 says, he, he, he tells us that unless we're born of the spirit, you must be born again. You must be born from above. And unless we're born of the Spirit, born again, born from above, we cannot enter into this realm. And, the, and there, there, Father gave us the, the capacity to know Him. He said, I write my laws and my ways upon your heart and your mind, and you'll do them. He put His Word on the inside of us when we were born of an incorruptible seed by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Somebody said it's a progressive sanctification. Well, it's not a progressive sanctification. It's a maturation in this sanctification. We've been, sanctification means to be set apart into holiness. And if we're going to believe what most people are, are, are coming, coming out with these days, God's going to have to repent to Adam for kicking him out of paradise. If we're going to believe what most people are saying today in their human, humanistic mind bent, you know, you're, God's going to have to... God's going to have to repent to the generation of Noah for wiping out, their, wiping out the earth. If we're going to believe what people are saying about God just going to accept you as you are and go with whatever program you've got, people backslide on God continually, and they're not broken about it. They just pick up their goods and act like everything's okay. They regroup and do whatever it is they're going to do and put Jesus in it. And I'm going, to bring, I'm going to minister to you this morning about some of these powerful statements of where God is saying to the nation of Israel, listen, I don't, I'm, I'm not accepting your worship in the sanctuary until I see worship in your, in, your, in your living room and I see worship in the conduct and character of your life in the marketplace, in the conduct and character of your life where you're, where you're uh, having your entertainment and, and having your fun. He says, when I see the, that work of righteousness, that work of love, that work that I demand. I have so, Micah, the prophet Micah said, the Lord showed you what's good, what he requires of you. To do righteousness, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. And, and that's one thing that is people really have a hard time doing. Walking in humility. Everybody's right in his own eyes. Because it's just like it was in the days at the end of, of the book of, of Joshua. Every man did what was right, turned to his own way, did what was right in his own eyes because there was no king among them. Well, I'll tell you, the king of kings is here. I mean, Christ Jesus, the king of kings, he's ruling right now, and it's time God's people be willing to come under his rule. Father, Father's inviting you to come under his rule. God wants the people in the earth. I'm, I want to be his people in the earth. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to play the hate game. I'm not going to play the point of finger at accusation and slander. Those are, that's, that's, the, that's the devil. And, and, and the devil's game, he is the accuser. And it's Satan's game, he is the slanderer. So when you're slandering, you're Satan. You're participating with him. You're, act, you're, you're, you're actually participating in the acts of Satan. When you accuse, you're participating in the acts of devils. Huh? So that takes beyond self. But self got you there. Because you didn't choose to lay that thing down and say, No, Holy Spirit, I know what you said for me to do. You tell me to, you tell me to love. You tell me to show mercy. You tell me to submit myself. You tell me to walk in joy. You tell me to walk in peace. I'm going I'm to, oh, Lord, you know what? A relationship gets wonderful. The relationship with the Lord gets so wonderful when all of a sudden we find it. 
And now we, we find ourselves, for, for, I like to use this particular uh, example because it's so dramatic. And we find ourselves being sad or disappointed. And we just deny that. We're not going to go with it. We're not going to let our emotions be carried away with this. And we just simply say, we say, no, I'm not going to do that. And we turn immediately. We, turn, we don't look to ourselves for the joy. We don't look within ourselves for the, for the happiness. We tur me turn immediately to the Holy Spirit. And we say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your joy. Fill me with your gladness. Because, look, I'm going to tell you, God says over 700 times in His Word that His is what He demands of our lives. And so if we're going to let God's word rule over us, then what's up? You know, what's up? Well, we want to self-justify. Well, we, we upset and we are justifiably upset because, you know, after all, things have been going our way. No, no, no. What happens when you turn to the Holy Spirit? You say, fill me with your joy, and immediately you get filled with the joy. Now you're in a relationship. Ooh, hallelujah. Now you call, he answers. Now you ask, and he supplies your need. People, I want, I want to see folks get out of religion. I want to see them start shining with the brightness of God. I want to see the appearance of the king's seed upon the face of God's people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The king's seed, born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, if we're going to believe what people are saying these days and the way folks act, God's going to have to go ahead and repent. To Sodom and Gomorrah. And go ahead and just, you know, uh, just say, look, you know, we're going to have a retrial. And Sodom and Gomorrah, you come on in too. Okay, because I, I learned better now. I recognize, you know, I was wrong. I got upset. I was wrong. So come on in. And we're going to go ahead and resurrect all those, those vile people during the days. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get the devil in on it, too, because he's going to have to repent to Satan. He's going to have to get involved. and Just let him have his corner, do whatever he wants to do. It's hell. Father's never going to do it. He's completely and forever separated from it. And I'm so glad because that's, he's got the only place which, which is the realm of true love. People constantly getting hurt because they put out their emotions to something they think is love, and it gets stomped on. Why? Because it wasn't real. It wasn't real. It came. It came. It came as a giant disappointment. It came as... It came just, it was just, a, it was just a falsehood. It was a lie. It was an illusion. It was a fantasy. It had all of seemingly the outward appearance of it, but then the heart of it was revealed. People could look good on the outside, but all of a sudden, you begin to get real close to it. The inside gets revealed, and oh, it's just nothing but full of dead men's bones and all kinds of evil and all kinds of corruption. What we got to recognize is this. <coughs> Father changed us on the inside of heart and our spirit. So that he could teach us. He gave us his heart. He gave us his spirit. So that he could teach us and establish us in all of his ways. He wants to mature us and grow us into a place of walking with him in righteousness and true holiness. We hey, he bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we now, being dead to sin, cut off from it, might live under righteousness. And righteousness is the ways and the acts and character of the living God. And I'm telling you, somebody said, oh, that's too hard. No, that's too wonderful. No, that's just too beautiful. That means you've got to change everything about your hateful self. <laughs> that means you've got to change everything about your wrongness and let God correct you and lead you in the right way. He, he's come to show us the way thereof. He's come, to, he's come to show us how to have it for real, not fake. He's come to give us the reality of his own life. And I pray in Jesus' name you'll wake up to a relationship where God is supplying life so abundantly to you. It's more than you can contain. Well, I won't keep preaching like this till somebody says, yes, I'm going to do this. And, I, you know, I, I, I praise, I praise, you know, hallelujah. I, 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 praise the Lord that, I praise the Lord that so many folks have, you know, they have responded to the Lord. It's just what happens when we go ahead and decide to um, move on from just being babes in Christ by desiring the pure word of God. To say, Jesus, I want you to come rule over me. Holy Ghost, you come rule over me from this day forward. I don't want to have any of my own bad attitudes. I don't want to, have my own, I don't want to walk in my own mind. I'd rather walk in the mind of Christ. I don't want to walk in my own life. I would rather walk in the, the life of the Spirit. And, and so then you begin to come under the rule and you become... You, you become dedicated, committed, 
to the Lord leading you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You become committed to discovering the beauty of what it means to be made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. You discover how wonderful it is to live in the kingdom, to be seated in a realm called he the heavenly, to walk in the realms of the spirits. Not some ugly, boring, you know, backward, old-fashioned lifestyle. Man, it is just so futuristic. It's that which lives and abides and lasts forever. Hallelujah. You know what? I, I think what I'm going to do here is rather than start where I was thinking about starting, I really, I'm going to start right over here in Psalms chapter 37. Start over here. And open your Bibles. Try Psalms chapter 37, verse 27. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, from the beginning of time, Father's all he's been saying is, look, I want to have a relationship with you. Huh? I, want, I want to walk with you. Father's not going to walk with iniquity. He's not going to walk with evil. Somebody said, oh, the blood of Jesus Christ covers me and cleanses me. Okay, go ahead and take it one step further. What are you going to do now? You're supposed to walk in the Spirit, live by the Spirit, be led by the Spirit. Because now you're going to say the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me and, and covers all of my sin. I'm still walking in sin and God's walking with me. Then you've got to redefine holiness. You've got to redefine who He is. You've got to make Him something different than He's revealed Himself to be. That's your Bible. That's your word. That's your idea. Those are your concepts. Had nothing to do with what God has revealed to us in His word concerning what His will is. And he's not asking us to come and live some hard, and ugly, terrible life. He's coming. He's coming to bring us into life. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's coming. Blah, blah, blah. He's coming to bring us into joy. And you say, okay, you got to have. You know, you're going to have to be sad and unhappy for at least five hours a day. I want you to feel miserable and rotten and wretched. I mean, there. That would be. I used God say that would be terrible. God is saying, come on in the joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come, hallelujah. Come and rejoice. Come, I want to show you what it means. <laughs> I want to give the oil of gladness. Hallelujah. I want you to be happy. I, I want to fill you with more than a wellspring. I want to cause gushing rivers of, of living water of life, giving power of my own presence, my own way, my own person, all that I have. I'm giving it to you freely. Ah, and people are sitting there looking, wondering, hmm, do I want all the riches or do I want to sit here and play with my marbles? It is worse than that. It's worse than that. It's worse. Do I want to continue on carrying this dead, rotten, uh, mutilated corpse around? <laughs> or would I like to go ahead and step in to talking and walking with somebody who, who's alive and, and has, has every good thing and smells good, too? The sweet presence of the Lord. Abel, I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I fail to really come up with the allegories that are, that are really needed to express what's really going on. And those things which people choose ignorantly and blindly on a daily basis. Simply because they're not willing to take a hold of the wisdom and the insight of the Word of God that shows us exactly what step to make. And tells us when we make a wrong step. Don't do that. Don't live like that. No, I'm going to live like this. Oh, I feel this way and... You should feel sorry for me. And I can't believe, I can't believe that you don't. I can't believe that, that you're not more sympathetic to my problem. And uh, no, I don't want to be sympathetic to your problem. We want to deliver you from it here today. The Lord, the Lord, would, love to, the Lord would love to take full control of your life. Would you give it to him? He would love to become the ruler of your life. He wants you to become ruler. People call him Lord. It's ruler. Lord means ruler. It means sovereign, almighty ruler. Whatever you say, it's just absolutely that way. It's not open for discussion. I feel we should talk. We're not talking. This is it. Huh? You say, well, that's unreasonable. No, it's not. It might be unreasonable if the person was fallible and they didn't have any, they didn't have any better sense than you do. Then both of you can reason about your, you know, you can have a, you can have a transference of ignorance among one another and feel better about it. Should I say that again? There could be a transference of ignorant, um, ignorance among both of you, and then you can both feel better about it. But Father's already, Father knows the right way. He knows how to, he knows how to give you the life. He, he knows what's going to make the difference in the way uh, <laughs> that you live. He knows what's going to, he knows what's going to last forever, what's not going to last forever. So just, he knows what's going to bless you, what's not going to bless you. So he says, do this. When he's got, what does he got to, what does he, does he, you know, what, what has to happen? Does he have to persuade us before we agree with him? Or will we come under his rule? Hallelujah. I pray today you'll hear his voice not hard in your heart. As the days, in the days of provocation when people provoked God and said, 
If you're really who you are, say you are, and you're really going to do what you say you're going to do, then you need to prove it. In the temptation, when they provoked God in the midst of the wilderness, and God said, swore in his wrath, he said, oh, swore in his wrath, said, I'm telling you right now, you're not coming in. Though the work was finished from the foundation of the world, you're not coming in you're the, because of the unfaithfulness, because of just people just wanted to do it their own way. You can't, you know, Father's not going to condescend to agree with men because man doesn't know anything about walking in this eternal life, this life that lasts forever. He just given us the privilege and the opportunity to come follow him. His leadership is unquestionable. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And I just pray that you just understand that when you obey the word of God, you're coming under it. And when you're not obeying the word of God, you're not coming under it. And you get 57,000 chances every, every day to decide. Because I'm going to say that every second, that's about 16 hours awake. Okay, 16 times 60 times 60. It's about 57,000. Okay. And then after you decide to go ahead and, get be, go ahead and be filled, hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Then, you know, oh, rabba seg daily be out of soto. The, the, you know, there won't be quite so many issues coming at you right and left. That's a lot of that's a lot of things coming. So you don't understand, man. I got things coming at me right, left, and center. Yeah, I know about fifty-seven thousand of them. One's coming at you every second. All those thoughts that are going through your head. When are you going to be willing to shut them down? When are you going to say, "Peace, be still," in Jesus' name? When is the power of the living God going to be begin to be executed in your life? These are the things that Father's asking you. The thing, these are the things that Father is asking. In Psalms chapter 37, verse 27. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. It's pretty simple. Well, God changed his mind now. Yeah, you can continue to do evil <coughs> and you dwell forevermore. Then no, you know, it's not going to happen. You listen, there's eternal judgment. We, we're supposed to, <laughs> hallelujah. We're supposed to go on to perfection, not relay again the foundation of repentance from dead works. A faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms and eternal judgments. Some people don't believe in eternal judgment. I believe in an eternal judgment. God teaches about an eternal judgment. Some people believe that, well, you know, after a while, you're going you're gonna to fry for a little while, then you're going to get delivered. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to get punished for a little while, and then you're going to be set. God's got eternal judgment. People are deciding. People are deciding. Father chooses to remain in an unseen realm to establish something on the inside of us that could not be established otherwise. If you were interacting with them with your sight and, and with the sound and your, with, with, with the touch, it would not be established. It would not be established. And Father's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. He's going to totally eradicate all sin. So there's, day, there's a day where Satan will finally meet his absolute and, and final end. It's the end of the thousand year reign of Christ. Read about it in Revelation chapter 21. At that final day and that final hour, you listen to me. God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells only righteousness. And that, ev that event of sin and iniquity will have been purged from the heavens and from the earth, from the universe. And it will never have a possibility of taking place again. And God is looking to see whether or not you want to participate with him. And he's not going to alter his word and he's not going to change his word. And he's not going to have a kind of Holy Spirit. He's going to teach you how to work, walk and, and live in the pure and the absolute realms of his, of his presence and of his glory. He's given us the blood of Jesus Christ to continually cleanse us it, 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 as if we're, willing to, if we're willing to walk with him and we're willing to learn righteousness. But there are many people who live in, a, in strongholds of sin and iniquity and they've never repented. And they say they're right with God. Not right with God. You might want to be right with God, but you're not right with God. There's provision for you to be right with God, but there's commitments you're going to have to make. There's a surrender of your will. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. It's going to have to become a cry of God's people again. Huh? huh. Take my heart, it is your throne. <laughs> take, take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be your royal throne. Wow. Lord, I'm, I'm, my eyes are set on righteousness. My eyes are set on living in the Spirit. My heart set on walking in the Spirit. My heart is set on walk, li being led by the Spirit. What Spirit? Holy Spirit. Spirit of holiness. What is holiness? It is absolute otherness, absolute separateness than everything that exists within the realm of this world that you know about. It is everything so separated, so opposite from that which men find themselves in that when God first began to reveal his holiness, he said, set bounds upon the mountain and tell everybody they cannot come near me. They cannot come. Not even an animal, not a beast, nothing. It's all defiled. Don't let anything near me. And if they, if they, if they cross the boundary, 
they must be killed, destroyed. Huh? This is the God whom we serve. You don't like him? A lot of people don't like him. And man's sin is ultimately going to have one final end. It will rise up with a hatred against God to destroy him. And that's what you see in the Battle of Armageddon. The Lord's let sin run its full course until, a, the, until sin becomes fully ripe, fully matured. So men can, all men can, for all time, and all creation for all time, can see the wages of sin. What little bit of sin will ultimately result in. The little bit of sin will ulti ultimately result in people wanting to destroy the very author of life. In Jesus' name, I cast that power of darkness off of you. The circumcision of Christ has come to circumcise us, to remove the body of the sins of the flesh, so that now we can walk with God. They want to talk about, oh, I'm still in this and I'm still in that, and you know, we still got the sin nature, and we're still, you know, we're laying aside the sin. Well, when are you going to get the job done? I'm going to tell you right now, you better have the faith, because if you don't have the faith, you don't have any miracle power or miracle resources to really do anything. Huh? It'll never happen. If it's just philosophy, it's just, if it's just ideology, if it's just Christian tradition, it ain't going to work for you. It ain't going to work. You'll find yourself in the same state in which you began. But if you take a hold of the Word which produces faith, you take a hold of the Word which God the Holy Spirit will produce the miracle of that Word the, and, and the miracle results of that Word, then you're going to have what God says for real. There's going to be change. You're going to learn how to hate evil. You're going to learn how to do good so that you can live forever. Hallelujah. For the righteous Lord loves righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's holy in all of his ways and righteous in all of his works and righteous in all of his ways and holy in all of his works. So let me finish reading this. He says, <coughs> verse 27, 28, for the Lord loves judgment. And for, it does not forsake his holy ones. Huh? The eyes of the Lord, this New Testament, eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But those who do wicked are cut off. They're cut off. Those who do wickedness, those who continue on in sin. We know that everyone is born of God does not sin. They, they don't live a life practicing sin. They don't find a way to justify sin. Oh, God understands. Oh, nonsense. The blood of Jesus cleansed me. He hasn't, obviously, because it's still there. The act of it is still there. The power of it is still there. The, spirit of, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, made us free from the law of sin and death. And when the law of sin and death has a place to rule over us and occupy our life, then obviously we've not been liberated by the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Obviously. The Lord said, I give you a new heart and a new spirit, and I put my spirit within you. This is the new covenant. I'll write my word upon your heart, tables of your heart, and in your mind, so that you will do them. That's both Old Testament and New Testament, people. That's Hebrews 8.10, Hebrews 10.16. We're going to have to grab a hold of the reality that Father's really genuinely brought a miraculous change into our life. And that now there is a responsibility for us to interact with the Holy Spirit and obey Him. And let the Word of God rule over us. Because if we will, we'll find ourselves being strengthened from day to day. Maturing continually, we'll find ourselves hating evil just like He hates it. Loving righteousness and having the understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ and the knowledge of the Holy. To depart from evil and wickedness. To no longer participate with that which Jesus Christ. Christ came to destroy the works of darkness, the works of the devil. It's true. Amen. Amen. Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, beloved, now are we the sons of God in every one. Huh? And it, though it does not appear what we shall be when we shall see, we, what we shall be, when we, when we see him, we shall be like him. We'll see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure. Hallelujah. And that purity is found in the blood of Jesus Christ and the working power of the Holy Ghost. He purified us by his blood so that we may be consecrated by the Holy Spirit not to get contaminated again. Amen. And to learn how not to get contaminated again and become unclean again. Huh? Therefore, brethren, having these uh, promises, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh, perfecting God's holiness uh, in the fear of the Lord. Yeah, the Lord said, that's right, on the heels of the Lord saying, come out from among them, be ye separate, says the Lord, and I'll receive you. Touch not the unclean thing, I'll receive you. I'll be, a, I'll be a father unto you, and you'll be my children. I mean, what a plan. I'm interested. Huh? I don't want to be, I'm not hanging, I don't like hanging out with devils. I cast out devils, not hang out with devils. Huh? 
I don't like participating with unclean spirits. I like purity. I like being, I like being freshened up. I like, I like being clean. Hallelujah. Oh, my, I like wallowing in the pig pen <laughs> of sin and iniquity. And Father God, the Holy Ghost, men's minds are so warped, their lives are so twisted, they can't even begin to understand this. They're blinded to the reality of, the, reality of it. And God comes shine the light of his goodness and his glory upon our soul where we understand that there's pleasures at his right hand that nothing in this world can touch. You begin to understand, oh, God, teach me, oh, Lord, that my soul would love only you, desire only uh, holy things and seek pleasures that are at your right hand. You'll grab a hold of, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil because yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. And that includes right now. Jesus is not going to start reigning someday. He's reigning right now he's ruling with a rod of iron right now you and I right now have submitted ourselves to the program one day he's going to come and he's going to demand and he's going to enforce that everyone is submitted to the program and after you come out of what they're going to get out of seven years of unbelievable tribulation upon the earth where the wrath of God is poured out on sin somebody said how does God feel about sin well just start reading about Revelation chapter 6 and you get a pretty good picture Huh? That's not the devil doing it. That's God saying, I'm done with this nonsense. I'm done with this wickedness. I'm done with the bickering and the backbiting. I'm done with the pushing and the shoving. I'm done with the hate and the death. I'm done with the murder and the rape. I'm done with the lying and cheating. He's allowed it to go on so that all men can see its consequence. That all creation can see what a little bit of it will always result in the total ruin a little bit of disobedience, and your older son's going to smash your second older son in the back of his head and drain his blood upon the earth. That's pretty hectic. That's Cain and Abel, in case you don't understand the word of God. That's what's going to happen. And it's going to be downhill. It's going to get worse from there. You might just decide you don't want to have any more of it. And the Spirit of Holy has come give you the privilege and the ability to live free from it. But as long as you want to hold on to it, you don't have a heart that is a longing for God. You're not interested in being separated unto Him. You just want to be able to have some kind of an insurance policy. You just want to be able to have His favor while you do whatever you want. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Some people go on ch church on Sunday morning. They didn't really want to. So except for that. Somebody asked me, said, well, why do, you, why do you want to be in church so much? Because I love heaven. And it's the closest thing to heaven that I can get right now. And it isn't so much about a It's not so much about a bunch of people. It's about, it's about being with a bunch of God's people. Hallelujah. It's about, hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, when you walk with people, when you get into a worship service where everybody's been living the life, huh? It's not pretense. It's not false. It's not fake. It's not hypocrisy. Everybody's been living the life. And they come with an, uh, with an offering in righteousness. They come with a commitment and a consecration of, to the living God. Oh, the freedom and the power and the glory of the Holy Ghost. Where there's two or three people that are looking like that and acting like that. Then all the world can look on and see the beauty and the splendor of it. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll come under the rule. I pray in Jesus' name, you come under the rule. I pray in the name of Jesus, you give all diligence to making your calling and election sure. Because if you do these things, you will not even slip. None of your steps will slide. If you'll, if you'll give yourself to the disposition which God demands, and he outlines it again and again, of which 2 Peter chapter 1 is just a small list of it, he said your disposition will, re 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 will result in, a, in a, a, a dimension in which you now will have the, the Holy Spirit open up to you and minister to you an entrance into the everlasting kingdom, the glory realm of heaven, how to access this place, how to get a miracle when you need one, how to get a sign and a wonder when you need one, how to talk to Father in a deeper way. You're going to have to learn how to talk to Father in the first way to start off with, as just talking to Him through prayer and consecration and commitment and obedience huh, and submission to Him. And then later on, He's going to let you, he's going to let you talk to Him in a deeper way and a deeper way, and He shall make your waters deep and cause your rivers to run like oil. 
And when we talk about rivers running like oil, we're talking about the thickness of the anointing and the expression of God's own person and, and, and God's own glory. See, he is gloriously exalted in his holiness. The anointing was all about the privilege and the ability to live in the holiness of holinesses. He actually, after having rubbed down, as it were, poured out the oil upon the priest, he said to the priest, you are holiness of holiness, holiness of holinesses. Your kadosh kadashim, your holiness of holinesses. Hallelujah. To come over here and live in the holiness of holinesses, which is the, we call it the holies of holies. He says you're holy of holies, so that you can live in the holies of holies. Hallelujah. It, it is an abundant life. I tell you, Jesus wasn't lying. He wasn't exaggerating. It's an abundant life. It is a joy. It, it, it's all spiritual blessings all right now in a heavenly realm. Hallelujah. It's walking day in, day out with, a, with rivers of, uh, not a squirt, but rivers of living water, li rivers of the living life of the living God issuing forth from out of our innermost being, out of our emotions, out of our passions, out of our appetites, out of our attitudes, out of our thinking realm. Amen. Hallelujah. What a life. It's an abundant life. It's a real life. It's the very life of Christ. It's the very life of God. It's the very life of the Father. It's the very life of the Holy Spirit. And he says, if you're the sons, you'll be led. You'll, if you're sons, you'll walk. <laughs> you'll, you'll love this way. <laughs> the light men set in darkness and under the shadow of death. And the light sprang up. But men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. I pray that you'll come in the light, enjoy the beauty of his life and the beauty of his presence and say, you know what? I want to stay here. I don't want to go out anymore. And then when you're met with the challenges that come at you through the circumstances, the wind of circumstance, the wave of circumstance. See, Paul said you can either be devoted to coming into the fullness of the measure, the maturity of the ministry of Jesus, even to a fully matured man, or you can continually be a baby tossed back and forth by your problems and by the problems that people create for you. Ah, oh, people problems. Well, you know what? You can be the answer to people's problems if you wouldn't come under the yoke of it. <laughs> if you wouldn't get all hog-tied by it. <laughs> you wouldn't get all harnessed up by it so people's problems can plow with you. Are you listening to me? I mean, come on, get a brain. Come on, get a, make a decision here. Say, wait a minute. I'm not a slave to men anymore. I'm not a slave to circumstances anymore. I'm not a slave to my own selfish whims anymore. I'm a servant of the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of the Most High God. Yeah. To live in His life, to live in His way, to go everywhere, showing the beauty of His presence. Not all beaten down, broken, busted up. Huh? But to show the beauty of His love. Jesus didn't walk around all broken down, beat up, and busted up, huh, with a broken leg, dragging a broken leg along. This is what the Lord gave me, huh? He got some leprosy across the side of his face. Yeah, I'm suffering for Jesus. No, he went around setting people free. He went around loving on folks. He went around showing people, hey, I'm the door. Come on in. Look over here. This is good. I, I, <laughs> Uh, I, I guess really the best way to personify sin is just look at the worst sickness and disease, the, the, worst, the most terrible leukemia that you could possibly imagine that eats, uh, eats out the blood, every blood cell, the bone marrow, and the smell of it is beyond putrid. And the life is sitting there in pain, and every cell of their body is in pain. Every neuron is firing to the brain, pain, pain, excruciating pain. That's sin. Sin and sickness are Siamese twins joined at the hip. Huh? It's about time you start naming your sin something you don't want to have anymore. And come to the, come to the fountain huh, that's drawn from Emmanuel's veins, where sinners plunge beneath its flood, lose all their guilty stains. Come to a place where you can be liberated. Come to a place where your heart can be circumcised to love the Lord your God. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. And if you obey me, my Father will come, and I will come, and the Holy Ghost will come, and we will make our dwelling place with you. We invite you, come live with us. I'm telling you, don't worry about the bills no more. We got it all. We got, we'll, we got it all under control. We'll take care of you. We'll supply all that you have need of so you need no, no longer take thought for what you should wear. I'll take good care of you. You need to no longer take thought for what you see. I'll take good care of you. Amazing God. Oh, no. Well, we got it. We're not, well, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, we just really can't. We can't impose ourselves upon you. You know, we're pretty, we're, 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 we're pretty squared away here. We feel pretty good about the labors 
that we are engaged upon as we provide for ourselves, live our own life while we worship, lift our hands and worship you. No, I'm just going to have to stop that. The Lord wants you to come and be a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable. He wants you to come into a place where you cry, your heart, is, your heart cries out and said, Oh God, let this sacrifice be a sweet smell unto you. Huh? I'm interested. Father, how did you like that? Was it good? Was it exactly what you were looking for? Was, in other words, was it pure, 100% Holy Ghost? Because, Father, I know what you want is you want us to worship you in the Holy Spirit and in the truth. Amen. Let me get back to this. I got 20 other verses of Scripture, so <coughs> got to measure out the time. Um, you know, I'm just kidding. You. Look at verse 29. The unrighteous shall inherit the land. And dwell in therein forever. You know, the first, one of the first editions of the King James Bible, when they printed it, it said, you shall commit adultery. They left out a not. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay. They had a, a quick revision. <laughs> I believe some people still got that revision. I believe some people got that misprint. <laughs> some people still got that misprint. Uh, <laughs> the Lord said, you will not inherit the kingdom. They who do these things shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom. The righteous, the righteous shall inherit the land and shall dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of judgment. What is his tongue talking about? The word of God. What did God say about it? What did Father, how did Father tell me I was supposed to act in that situation? What was Father, what did Father tell me my response would be? You know, the other day I, I, I was in a situation and I was self-justifying for a minute and I thought that these people should be, you know, taken care of. And I said, now, Father, I want you to show me exactly what I should do here. I was smart enough to do that. I'm submitted enough to do that. I want you to show me exactly what should be my response here. And I heard a still small voice. Bless them that curse you. But can't you change it for this time? For this one. This is a special circumstance, the Father. And I ask you, Lord, just remember the days of Elijah for me right here once again. No, he's not going to do it. Bless them. Bless them. Pray for them. Hallelujah. So I can say, okay, Father, that's what you do. You say, okay, and then what you do? You say, you've got to do something. It's very important because there was a wrong thing going on inside of my spirit and my thinking. Although I didn't act on it, it was a wrong, it was not of the Father. And it's not subjective, it's very clear. His word is very clear when we begin to involve him into our daily life. I said, Father, forgive me. I don't want that way even to be able to have any impact even in the little, least little bit. I ask you to wash me. I ask you to cleanse me. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for strengthening me to have it more spontaneous. More, I, want, I want to have it more just as the reflex continually of my life. Never have a special circumstance where I believe somebody ought to be bashed upside the head <laughs> or sued huh? or taken to, you know, whatever. Exclamation mark. <laughs> look, at who, look at who we are. The law of God or his word is in his heart. Your Lord, your word, if I get in my heart, your ways. Somebody said, ah, the law of God's terrible. The law of God's beautiful. We don't need a sacrificial system anymore. Albeit, you need to go read Ezekiel chapter 40, verse through, chapter 40 through 48 and get your mind blown away for a few minutes. But I'm not going to talk about that. We don't need a sacrificial system anymore. Christ Jesus paid it all, did it all. He's the last offering for sin. Praise God. We get to all come by him. There's no other means by which your sin could be washed away. There's no other means by which the presence and the glory of God should come and dwell among men. In the midst of us. Somebody said, oh, I would love to have been there. in the time when God showed up with a fire cloud of glory and hovered over top of the tabernacle in the wilderness. And my, he's talking right out of the cloud. And everybody that was standing there could hear him. My goodness, dear people, have you no idea what God has done through His only begotten Son? He's come and made you His very habitation, His tabernacles, His dwelling place. It's true. Somebody can go and say, wow, I want to get it, or hallelujah, or amen, or something. 
or I'm not ready yet. Something. Let there come a reaction in your life. When you get hungry, if I said, how many of you want to eat? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to hear some roars going on down. I, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. If you had no money and you were, you're barren and destitute and on the street. And I said, I'm giving out a million dollars here for anybody who gets, gets, really needs it. Has an expression of real need. I'm going to tell you right now. We, we would hear it. We'd hear shouts. I want, you, I want you to be blinded by the mind-blinding spirits of the powers of darkness anymore. I don't want you to be under a gag order. See, there's a gag order on the United States of America and the Western world, many nations in the world. You can't talk about Jesus. You can say any name but Jesus. Except for cursing slander. You start cursing slander Muhammad, the ISIS is going to come get you. Uh, so there's a fear of that. Huh? Oh, don't say nothing. Oh, give them whatever they want. Oh, we can, because Jesus, Jesus, we just use his name as a byword and a word, to cur a word of cursing. The Lord described that when the name, a blessing that he gave to his people becomes a byword and a word of slander and a word of cursing, it is evident token that the people of God have gone into captivity and they're living under the yoke of the enemies of God. It's about time somebody says, you know what? I'm going to let God, the Holy Ghost, I'm going to let the Spirit of the Lord come upon me. I'm going to let Him raise up within the side of me that this yoke of bondage, that this stronghold that has held God's people in a place of defeat would be broken. So that the glory of His name and the beauty and the splendor of His name People went into, they went into bondage because of their idolatry. They went into bondage because of their sin and their iniquity. Because they would not turn back. But all the time they were showing up at the tabernacle. All the time they were showing up for church. All the time they were singing music. All the time they were saying, oh, we are the people of God. And there's no way that anything will befall us that is evil because God is in our midst. It's so sad, I mean. You know, the devil doesn't have to have many, too many tricks because this one trick works very effectively again and again. I pray that people be stirred up with his righteous cause. I pray that God's people rise up and begin to do things within the framework of your own personal life. This is where it's going to make the difference. Not about how you could change people. Not about changing, the, you know, the politics of a nation and changing the judicial legislative system of a nation. It's about you deciding to come under the rule of God. Huh. And when you do, power of God begin to flow through you. And you'll be mature and you'll, and you'll increase continually until all of a sudden we'll find out that, the, that there is a Savior among God's people. That there is a mighty moving of the Spirit of the Lord uh, for anyone who desires and who, anyone who's willing. You won't be in prison to sickness and deceit, disease and, and sin and defeat, defeat anymore. This is what Father has for you. He's calling you to come. He says, the law of God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. Really, the pretty many, many, many respects, the same thing that Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1. He said, God has given you everything that you need. God gave you everything you need. He gave you all the life you need. He gave you all the, the godliness that you need. He gave you everything that pertains. His divine power gave you everything that you need to life and godliness because he's called you to glory and virtue or excellence of character or really the nature of the living God the divine nature because he emphasizes it in the next in the next verse of scripture he said he has given us and made us partakers of the divine nature we've escaped the corruption that is in the world to us somebody said how because the Holy Ghost has come and live on the inside because Christ Jesus has come to live on here this is the mystery this is the this is the, the, the beautiful wonderful expression of the faith Christ in us our confidence of glory we have this treasure in this earth and vessel, Colossians 1, 27. For those of you who don't know that verse of Scripture, because I'm sure you know the rest of them I was quoting, right? But at any rate, we have this treasure in this earth and vessel, that the excellency of the glory and the power may be of God, not of us. 
They people want to try to do look to themselves. They want to look inside of themselves. They want to produce it out of themselves. If they don't feel it in themselves, they don't have it. When you don't feel it in yourself, when you don't feel it in the midst of the problem or circumstance you're in, look to the rock that hewed you. Look to the one who shaped you, formed you, redeemed you, bought you, purchased you. Turn and ask Christ Jesus. Say, give me the drink of the water. And out of that, out of that realm of his glory shall flow, flow the supply of the Holy Ghost to meet whatever need you have, to give you whatever ability that, that, is in, that is essential for what situation you're in. Listen to me. God wants us to live by him. He wants us to live by him. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He wants us to live in him. He says, this is the call. Come and dwell in me. Come and live in me. Get rid of your books. Get into the word of God. If there's anything that people need to do today, is they need to start reading the Bible. Oh, I read the Bible. Hardly. Because if you read the Bible, you would be saying, yes, we do. Because the more I'm in the word of God, the more I want to be and the more I see my need to be. Not some just up self-justified position of, oh, I've read it. That's nonsense. You with me? We, 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 right now, we started reading the whole Bible, starting Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. Just wanted to show everybody you can read it in 90 days, no problem, about an hour a day. And, uh, you know, we're just about at the end of it. And I pray that every person in this place will recognize that this, this, this is the way we live our life. Because if you give yourself to reading the Word, God, the Holy Spirit, can speak to you. You start a gen- and, and I'm talking about systematic reading the Word, not just spot checking every once in a while. Looking for loopholes or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about systematic. Genesis 1, 1 through Revelation 22, 21. And then you just start, you just read. And then the Holy Ghost, the, the Scripture just stands up and just slaps you across the face. And you say, let the righteous smite me. It'll be a health enemy. There, the God, the Holy Ghost, is able to correct you. You're able then to become acquainted with this, the realms of heaven, the realms of God, the realms of the supernatural, the miraculous, where he lives is not foreign anymore. His word is more than black ink on white paper. It's spirit. It's life. It's power. It's living. It's true. It's true. I pray that you get a diet, get an appetite. With the word of God and recognize that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm telling you right now, the only begotten Son of God, the incarnate, eternal, almighty God, had to, he said that and he meant it when, when he said it. <laughs> How much more do you and I have to take a hold of the reality of it? If we give ourselves to the word, God has given us the capacity of having been born of the incredible seed of the word of God, which lives and abides forever. I'm talking really fast because I've got a lot, of, a lot to say in a short time. But... If we give ourselves to his word, because we've been born of the seed of the word, we can understand it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to understand it. It would be meaningless to us. It would be meaningless to us. Oh, we'd get concepts. we know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that his mother was Mary. We would know certain things. We'd know that David killed Goliath, took up five stones. We'd know things like that. But Father wants to talk to us about matters of the heart, matters of the way we live. He wants to open our eyes and call us, cause us to see the glory that he's purposed for us to have. He made us co-inheritors with Jesus and heirs of Father right now. Not just, not just in the future, but right now. People want to live. So they want to have faith for the future, not faith for now. But God has a living faith for now. The day is the day. Right now. Right now. I mean, I, I, one of the things that make, provokes me so much is when people get into and start reading, you know, supposedly spiritual literature for, you know, to move in faith, it's nothing but a bunch of doubt and unbelief. You know, a bunch of doubt and unbelief literature. Just to bring you into a greater prison of doubt and unbelief. You need somebody to watch over your soul. Amen. Who's full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody who God appointed. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So you get perfected. Amen. 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 The Lord says this, 32. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeks to slay him. That is a sad situation, isn't it? Somebody said, well, we're going to try to impress the world. You're never going to impress the world. The world won't know you, can't know him, doesn't know you, doesn't like him, doesn't like you. Huh? You're not going to relate to the world because you sound like them, look like them. All you're going to do is get assimilated by the world. At, at best, you're going to get neutralized by it. Huh? It's time, it's time to... God's people step over into the realm of divine glory, get out of religion, into relationship. I'm going to tell you right now, people, I'm at kings and queens will start fainting around here. They'll start fainting. Somebody said, what are you talking about now? Queen of Sheba, when she came and saw the glory that was upon Solomon's life, she fainted. Huh? 
It's about time that the majesty and the splendor have place in our life instead of us living in our own life. Oh, my God, help us. Help us to turn from our own ways where we self-justify. You better watch out. Self-justify get all over you. You start letting a little bit in, and it'll take you over. You'll live in the, you'll come all of a sudden into the kingdom of self-justification. You won't even know it. The only way you're, your only way that you're going to walk in the truth and not be imprisoned by deception is because you come under the ruling leadership of the spirit of truth. For the Holy Spirit has come to lead us and guide us in all truth. And if we're not willing to be led by him, and he's going to lead us in the word of God, if we're not living, w- willing to let the word of God rule over our lives, not just, not just situationally, uh, not situational ethics, not just according to what we think is, uh, you know, right at that particular time, but continually, no matter what, whether it's convenient for us or not convenient for us. That's the only place that you and I are going to begin to find ourselves living in a place of liberation where we clear, see clearly, where we understand clearly, where we, where we there find ourselves not being ruled by imaginations. Somebody said, how many of you believe that you, you, you're not ruled by imagination? You better, be, you better be real careful. You better be actively engaged with the power of God, the God power that has been given to us to pull down, to, to pull down strongholds and cast down imaginations. I'm going to tell you right now, I've discovered again and again that people live by the, ra- the, the logical and rational. What is logical and rational? Which is based upon the perception that a person has that was developed out of their own life experiences. God says, you, 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 you live like that, you're going to fail. Many people live under the imagination, the logic and rational realm. God says, no, 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 I want to give you the mind of the Spirit. I want to open up your eyes and show you what's really going on. I want to teach you how to walk on water. Not drown. I want to teach you how to command the wind and the waves. Not be overwhelmed by them. I want to, sh- I want to teach you how to walk in all the ways of my life. You, you know, if you're not actively engaged in casting down imaginations, that's because you're overrun with them. When you're not actively engaged in denying yourself daily, it's because you're the prisoner of yourself. And Christ Jesus said, you want to be my disciple? Then you come to understand what it means to deny yourself daily. Take up your cross. And now you can follow me. Hallelujah. Now you're under the rule. Um, it's amazed how there's some people, I care how people come to me, they've been in church 40 years, full of the Holy Ghost, baptized the Holy Ghost 39 years, you know, got saved 40 years ago, got baptized the Holy Ghost 39 years ago, and then all of a sudden they have a, they have a moment, an epiphany. They have an encounter. They come to me, they say, hey, pastor, what does it mean to daily deny yourself? Woo, took us 40 years to get a breakthrough, but we're on, we're on, we're on course now. We're at least asking the question now. And it's not just living over in esoteric land. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a practical reality. Wait a minute, this is so I have a responsibility. You mean I've got responsibilities? After that I've been born again, <laughs> you've got more responsibilities now than you ever had. God hates a false witness. What would it, what, what's a terrible thing if one day we stood before the Lord and said, Dad, you bear false witness on a daily basis against me. You said that you had the life of Christ and you didn't have it at all. You said you were saved. You were an example of what it means to be born from above and to walk in the Spirit. And it was all nothing but a falsehood. You know good and well, because then you stand in front of his presence. You can't self-justify. You can't convince yourself of your own lie. You know, you know the lie that you'll convince yourself of the most? Not the one someone else tells you. The one you tell you. The one you tell yourself is the lie that will get you the worst. God's truth is a light of truth. God's word is a light of truth. God, the Holy Spirit, is the light of truth. And I'm going to tell you right now, he'll begin to bend you low. And cause you to hate iniquity and love righteousness. Then one of the first testimonies of truth, the first testimonies of wisdom and insight to what's really going on. Oh, I pray in Jesus' name that every person in this place here today will consecrate themselves to that which God has consecrated us to have. He paid a high price for us to live in the holies of holies. Why should you live in the unholy anymore? He paid a high price for us to have his righteousness. Why should we live in self-righteousness? He paid such a dear price for us to have his life. Why should we continue on in death? It's just time to come under the rule. This is what God's saying. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 18. I want you to look at this scripture with me. The Lord said, oh, here's God. Here, I hear Father. Here, I, Father's, Father's Pentecostal preacher, if you didn't know it. Father's Pentecostal, he dances, Zephaniah 317, he writes songs, hallelujah, I mean, he shouts, <laughs> when he preaches, he says, oh, Pentecostal preacher, 
Oh, he's a full of the spirit preacher, in other words. Because that's what Pentecost is about. Whoa, rapa! To be filled with the word of life. <laughs> to be filled with the word of God. To be filled with the word of the spirit. He says, oh, that you would have hearkened to my words. You would have hearkened to my commandments. Somebody said, oh, there's no commandments in the New Testament. There's over 2,100. They're all fulfilled in one, one dimension, though. Stepping into the same love that Father has loved us with. Think about it. He said, this, Jesus said, this new commandment I've given unto you. That as, as I have loved you, as the Father has loved me, you will love, this, you will love each other the same way. And there, there's, there, you know, there's no sin there. But out of, out of that realm, we begin to, he, God parses it all out for us. He begins to cause us, cause us to see uh, things that are violations against his love. He said, oh, that you would have hearkened unto my commandment. Then your peace should have been as the river. Hallelujah. And your righteousness as the waves of the sea. My, my, my. Hallelujah. I've been out in the waves of the sea at times where I felt like I have been smashed. The waves of the sea will smash you. <laughs> it will take and pull every joint out of your body practically. It, it, it's irresistible, it's powerful, it's mighty. What can stop it? What can prevent the mighty waves of the sea? I don't, nothing. Nothing. They're going to keep on moving right through, right through the big aircraft carrier, the biggest thing you can sit out there. They're going to keep right on moving right through. And nothing's stopping them in their course. Nothing will prevent them in their way. And Father looks at us through the mouth of his only begotten son and said, is anybody really thirsty here? They're all doing the religious thing on the Feast of Tabernacles. And they got the palm branches. And they're beating the earth. And they're crying out for the water, the mystical water of the Spirit of God to come forth from the earth. And crying out, oh, spring up, oh, well. And the Lord's saying, is there anybody really thirsty? Lift up his voice. And he calls, anybody really thirsty? Come and drink. And I'll make, I may come out of you these, this peace that's like a river and this righteousness that's like the mighty waves of the sea. I'll cause the very power and the wellspring of life, the very essence of the Holy Ghost to not only be in you, to be expressed through you like rivers, like rivers. And it's rivers of living water. And when you look at the rivers of living water, they're poured forth the crystal pure water, the clean, uncontaminated, absolutely pure water that poured forth from the throne of God that you see in Ezekiel. Wherever those waters came, life sprang up. That which was diseased was healed. That which was barren became fruitful. Oh, should God's people become the healing balm that Father has purchased us to be? That God's people should become the light of the world that Jesus Christ purchased us to be. All you need to do is dedicate yourself to quit living your own life. And that's hard when you've entangled yourself with the cares of this world. Huh? That's hard when you've got a mortgage so big that it's going to take you two lifetimes to finish paying for it. Huh? And you've got a car and it's two years old and you're lusting for another one you saw. Huh? When you're all wrapped up in all of this stuff, all this materialism, all, it is, all, the, all of these little carrots that are just dangling there to enslave you, to work more for yourself, to live out your own life. It's hard to even begin to move in a realm of truth because Father is calling for a whole different attitude and purpose. He wants your whole being in life to be centered in the kingdom of God and His righteousness. He wants your whole being to be living out Something that is actually going to last forever. It's eternal. It's good stock. It's good investment. It's a good share to have because it's going to last forever. This world will pass away and everything that is in it shall be burned up with a fervent heat. It being these things are true, how should you live your life? And how should you behave yourself in all manner of, 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 of holiness and purity? That's what God says. To come over into a place of learning what it means to be acceptable to God. To find our total righteousness and our total acceptance instantaneously in the blood of Jesus Christ. And then to find that righteousness and that acceptance in God again and again when we fail Him. 
something that we could have never earned, something we could have never attained to. And there he is continually providing it so long as we're dedicated and passionate about learning his ways and doing it right. When we become no longer passionate about learning his ways and doing it right, we no longer are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. You listen to me. I know that what I'm talking about, he that walks in the light as he is in the light has fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses him from all sin. There are things that are conditions that have to be met. The Lord said, if you stand there and you're asking for forgiveness and recognize that you haven't forgave, then you better go and forgive because you're not going to be forgiven until you do. The Lord said, I'll forgive you as many times as you need it so long as you're forgiving from your heart those who trespass against you. And a lot of people are sitting in the prison of unforgiveness and saying they're washed in the blood of the Lamb and their sacrifice is an offense to God and it grieves the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you right now, your conscience may be sued, but the Holy Ghost is still grieved. Watch out. You need somebody who's able to be a watchman, who's able to look into the Spirit, who's able to say by the Holy Ghost uh, because he's been given an anointing, not because of something he was born with, but because of an anointing that has been given. Just look in your life and say, this is what you need to do. This is what the Lord says. These are the things that are wrong. People rebel. Oh, you don't know what he's talking about. Oh, I can't believe he hurt me like that. Oh, I can't believe he said that to me. Instead of rejoicing, say, Mike, the light has come. Yeah. People want to hold on to self-righteousness. They want to ha hold on to their own reputation, their own personal insight and, and, and belief about themselves. Come on, people. Come under the rule. Come on. They, and listen, there's, there, God has given us a lot of latitude and a lot of room, uh, you know, and a lot of help and a lot of strength to learn how to walk in all of His ways. I mean, by the way, shouldn't it be pretty much of a full-time thing that you should give yourself to, seeing as God has given you the privilege to come into all the fullness of his divine power and expression. Think about that for a minute. Oh, I don't need any. <laughs> you don't need any help. You don't need any instruction. You don't need any guidance. You stuck in a ditch. A ditch is a grave where the end's kicked out. I just wish people would come get in line and say, am I in a ditch? I could say, yes. Am I in a ditch? No. In di yeah. No. Yeah. Everybody in a ditch, stand over here. Everybody's not in a ditch, stand over there. Everybody that's not in a ditch, please come pray for those who are in the ditch. We'd have breakthroughs. Amen. But what's going to happen is pride's going to rise up. I can't believe he put me in the category of being in the ditch. <laughs> fact of it is, I believe I know God better than he does. And fact of it is, I heard something he did. You know, the drill. That's where, I'm sorry I'm having to get hold a mirror up for you look at yourself here this morning forgive me i know you weren't ready you know you didn't know you were be having pictures taken you'd have dressed up better if you knew huh has anybody got a comb quickly yeah might as well laugh some medicine he had a numb yet hallelujah father just father just wants us to walk in truth now, I'm going to tell you right now, you of yourself have no capacity to do such a thing. I'm just telling you, you and I, are, we have no capacity to do such a thing. God, the Holy Ghost, has come to give us capacity. And so we're going to have to recognize that he's different from us. Okay? And that he's the ruler. Huh? He's not the facilitator. He's the ruler. Hallelujah. Amos chapter 4. Five, verse 24 but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream actually both of those verses of scripture are in the context of God saying I you know what you guys coming into my house and you you know what you're coming in here with false pretense you coming in here after having misbehaved after having abused and oppressed and lived an unholy life and now you're coming and offering up a sacrifice. He's saying, I'm telling you right now, it's not acceptable to me. It's like cutting off the head of a pig and offering it to me. He said, I don't want that. I want you to get your heart right. I love obedience. I want obedience more than sacrifice. I want truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. I want the wisdom of, of, I want my wisdom to be expressed in your life. The Lord wants us to get enough wisdom to where we're just willing to say no longer to being ruled by ourselves and to coming under the oppression of circumstance and situation about us. But all the time, we could live under the majesty of His reign and be filled up with every good thing that pertains to His goodness, to His life and godliness. 
every good and perfect gift. Psalms 46, 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will make your waters deep and I will cause your rivers to run like oil. That's not Psalms. I'm just reflecting. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Psalms 46, 4. I just woke up with that this morning. I shall make your waters deep. I'll cause your rivers to run like oil. Oh, Zebedanea. What an anointing. The oil of anointing. It has got, got, been given to us. See, we have received an anointing from Him. And this anointing teaches us that we are to abide or dwell in Him. Because that's what the anointing is all about. The privilege to now live our lives in the holies of holies. To live our lives in a oneness with Him. Not just as the people of God, but one with Him. Don't you want to understand that? Yes. That's too high for us. That's out of our reach. That goes way beyond anything that anybody right now could even begin to comprehend. And w if we will walk with Him in the simplicity that He requires of us right now and the responses that He requires of us right now, we'll grow and mature and our eyes will be open and we'll fully begin to comprehend and see what He's done for you and me. Who, When He opened up this life and gave to us His own glory so that we could be one. Hallelujah. Just like Jesus and the Father are one. We could be in Him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just as He is in us. That as the Father dwells in Jesus, Jesus dwells in us. That glory of, 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 of His unspeakable gift. Psalms 46, 4. There is a river. And what is that river? Out of your belly shall flow Rivers of the Holy Ghost. Rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given. For he was not yet glorified, but Jesus being glorified, exalted right hand of the Father. Pour forth that which you see and hear. Acts 2.33. And they saw, them, they saw as these men and women of God were so filled with the divine power of the living God, having received the promise of the Father, being endued with power from on high. Where all the expressions of heaven begin to redefine their life, the way they thought, the way they think, the way they speak. Oh, where the word of God could begin to live and dwell in them in a way, be in their mouth and in their heart continually. <laughs> this word of faith, always there, right, right there. Any situation I have, any circumstances I confront, oh, the word of faith is right there. It's written upon the tables of my heart. His word of I get in my heart that I might not sin against him. Uh, we, we're strong because the word of God abides in us and we have overcome the wicked one. His word is working mightily in me. His word, the incorruptible seed. His word of faith, his word of life, his word of authority. His word that created and, 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 and designed the heavens and the universe right there so that I have a word in due season. I can speak to whatever situation, whatever circumstance, whatever problem that I face. And it has to come under the authority of the living God. Hallelujah. Because I willed it in His will. Because I spoke it right out, of, right out of His word by the Spirit. When the Spirit of the living God speaks the word of God. Hallelujah. There is a river. The streams whereof make glad the city of God. You're not going to, Father, you're not going to get much, you're not going to get, you're not going to get much of any interaction. Let me just say it the better way. You're not going to get any interaction with God at all outside of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has come. He's the grace of God that has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. He's the one that comes and brings the activity of the call of God where Christ Jesus stands at the door of a heart knocking, saying, if any man will open up, I will come in and I'll fellowship. I'll come live on the inside. I'll come fill you with every good thing. The holy place, the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacles of the Most High. You know, when you begin to consider the beauty of God's unspeakable gift where he made us his temples, know you not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, that God lives in you. When's the last time you felt the Holy Ghost on the inside of you? When's the last time you were in a situation and you could have had your own attitudes, your own emotions, your own passions, your own 
your own way, but you said no, and the Holy Ghost sprang up on the inside. Spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. You came and began to draw water. <laughs> Hallelujah. You begin you begin to draw water from the well of salvation. <laughs> Christ Jesus. Begin to draw, draw water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, as the whole Holy Ghost began to supply all that you have need of. And suddenly you began to realize I am under the rule. My spirit is under the rule of the Holy Spirit. I want you to realize it. I want it to become a living relationship. I want to get you out of religion. I want a transition to take place in your life. A translation become a living reality where you find yourself in the heavenly realm and decide you're not going back to earth again. Hallelujah. You decide you're not going into the earthly again. You want to be mad, upset, unhappy, diseased, broken down, and sick. You can be that for five minutes. If you really need a little, we we'll give you five minutes. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you won't want one second of it. Uh, but you got to bring, you got to begin somewhere. Hallelujah. You got to begin measuring these things. They're quantitative as well as qualitative. You got to begin to apply your life to a practical relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that's not religious, it is an interactive relationship. Uh, act, act with the with the power of the living God, with the person of Jesus Christ, with the person of the Holy Ghost. The person of the Holy Ghost is right here for you right now. It's time to quit ignoring Him. It's time to get into the faith so that your eyes can see with with the eyes of faith that which is really going on. You don't live in the deceptions anymore. You're not tossed to and fro by the winds. <laughs> And the tricks, winds of circumstances and the tricks of men, whereby thy lion wait to deceive you. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that the strongholds of lies, the mind-blinding spirits of darkness, that those things, of oh God, that are contrary to your word and your spirit, things that even your people have agreed with that have, have brought them into bondage, that they'd be broken today. Father God, I ask in your mercy, I ask in your mercy that the eyes would be open so that each person can see. Lord, we know if our gospel be hid, it is hid from those whom the God of this world has blinded. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every mind blinding spirit, that every power of darkness, that every influence of religion, that every, every lie that we have told ourselves will be broken. Father, that in simplicity of heart, each person would humble themselves under your mighty hand and begin to say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word as you give me the power and the ability. I'm going to submit to you, to your way, by the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray now in Jesus' name that every single soul in this place will be named by you. God, that in your mercy and your love, every person here will be branded by you. Every person in here will be sealed by the Holy Ghost. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that every person in here would find their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They'd be able to come look over your shoulder and see it there. See the moment that you penned it in. And then out of that, Father, there would become a reaction. Guys, be careful. There would become a reaction. There would come a reaction to all that you've done. To the great love wherewith you've loved us. That when we were dead in our trespasses and sin. When we were without strength. Christ died for the ungodly. Where you commended your love towards us. Spared not your own son, but freely offered him up for us. Father, may we see the reality of it, the beauty of it, the love of it, your goodness of it, your passion in it, so that we can begin to respond to you like you've moved on us. That we begin to move for you like you've moved for us. In Jesus' name, I want everybody to stand with me. Gracias.
Father, sit you in and on us, Lord. Heal today, Lord. Heal today, Lord. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Let Father come touch you. He loves you. I don't care who you are, where you're from. I don't care what you've done. But those of you who have gotten stuck in a rut, you've got to understand something. You cannot have it your way and have it God's way. There's people in here that need to repent for the way that they have responded to the authorities of God. There's people in here that need to repent to the way that they've responded to the Word of God. Making the Word of God just something that they have an option to do if they feel like it. Because I'm telling you, God in His love and His mercy has made restoration as, as easy as repentance. He's made it as real and as true as your heart confesses, as your passion desires. In the cross, nothing's changed. All you have to do is just recognize you come right to the cross of Jesus Christ. Nothing's changed. In the cross. In the cross. There is a means by which you can be cleansed. There is a means that you can be set free. The greatest power that Satan wields against God's people is deception. People take a turn from the word of God and begin to self-justify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am set today. Here in the presence of the Lord. To see everything that would deceive you and lie to you and hold you back and trick you, broken off of you, so you get, you can come to a place of submission. Listen, the thing that God calls you, He says, come, learn of me. I'm lowly, I'm meek. Where, where you got your self-will, where you're fighting, where you believe what you believe, don't matter what anybody else says, that's your point of deception. I want the thing broken off of you today, but you've got to want it. Father's got a great plan for your life. He's got a great realm of divine power and glory for you to live in. Father does not expect that you be that we look the same, act the same next week as we're acting today. Father wants us to go from glory to glory. He wants His righteousness to flow through our lives like a mighty stream. He wants His judgments to run down like waters. He wants our righteousness to be as the waves of the sea. There's something that makes glad the city of God. And it's that glory of heaven that flows out from you and me. Amen. If you've never called upon the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm going to tell you, you want to do it now. He's not what men have made him to be. He's not what religion had made him to be. He's God Almighty who took upon himself the form of a servant to redeem us from sin, to redeem us from the lies, to release us from a prison. He made it so simple. He just simply said, call out to me. I come and rescue you. Call out to me and I'll save you. Father's looking for some people who want to know him without continuing on in sin. He's looking for some people who are going to get excited about living all their life, all the days of their life in righteousness and true holiness. When that becomes the cry of your heart, you will find the power of God. When that becomes the passion of your life, you'll find the miracle supply. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every yoke broken. God said this. He said, my spirit 
My spirit will not always wrestle with men. I'm going to tell you right now, you listen to me. I know the movings of God. God the Holy Ghost is wrestling with some people here. You've not been willing to yield. You've not been willing to respond. You've been talked to, but all you can do is uphold your own cause and what you think. God's pled with you. Said, my Holy Spirit would not always wrestle with the men, with man. For he's but flesh. I pray in Jesus' name, every one of you will fear before the Lord and humble yourself before the living God. And let him be God for you and God to you. And you'll be his people. That you won't allow rebellion and stubbornness. God says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as idolatry to him. Self-idolatry. Father, just simply asking you, just simply saying, he's pleading with you. Choose life and live. He's pleading with you. He's banging at the door of your heart. He's knocking. He said, if any man will open, I'll come and I'll, I'll, I'll fellowship with you. I'll give you everything. I'll give you it all freely. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to in any way withhold any good thing from you. It's only at the expense of our own will. It's at the expense of our own ideas and our own self-interest. One, one, one final plea before we close this meeting here as it is right now. One final plea with men. God, you listen to me. God is not going to accept you because you're right in your own eyes. Father, is not going to give to you all those things which he freely supplies because you're willing to participate with some of his word. Father is freely given all that he has to those who will follow him. Those who will cast aside their own life and begin to live the life that he's given. Father's just saying, cast away your shame. Cast away your sickness and your disease. Cast away your pain. Cast away those things that kept you in a prison. Come live my glorious life. I give it to you freely. That's all he's saying. But the pride of life is a fortifiable force. The pride of life is a power to contend with. Self-righteousness can rarely see the righteousness which Jesus gives. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and for your tender mercies that you've drawn us into yourself. Uh, Lord, that you've given to us life forevermore. You've given to us the greatest teacher that we could have ever asked for, the Holy Ghost himself. Father, I pray, oh God, that your people will step into the light and begin to be the light, the city set upon a hill, and begin to live in all this wonderful divine realm of your goodness, of your joy unspeakable, of your peace that passes understanding, of your life forevermore. Father, we pray, oh God, that your rivers will be flowing like a mighty stream. Oh God, that your rivers will, will be as the waves of the sea amongst your people. That they will shine as a city set upon a hill. That there will be no sickness nor disease. No sin or iniquity named among us. 
Father, that every man will come to learn how to serve you and keep your kingdom first and lay down their life for your just cause. That every man, every woman will come into the glorious church of Jesus Christ. The pillar and the foundation of the truth. That every person will become hooked up with your, your body, Lord. That each person will become members in particular. That each one would understand how to flow in the divine power of your glory. That the, that the world will be lit up and shaken with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, we thank you for the blood. I just want you to begin for just a few minutes just to thank the Lord with me for the precious blood that cleanses us, that washes us. Just thank Him for your cleansing. Just thank Him for your washing. Just come with a lamb. There remaineth therefore no more sacrifice for sin. Just come with the blood. 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 Just come to the throne of grace. Come to a merciful God. Come to a merciful God. His purpose to establish it, give you every good thing. Hallelujah. Everybody standing up here right now, I just want you to receive from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, in the name of Jesus, you're going to be stronger than you've ever been before. You're going to be stronger than you've ever been before. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord. I right now, in the name of Jesus, I tell every one of you to be filled with the Spirit. I command sickness and disease to go. I command torment to go. Shame, go. Go in Jesus' name. Sin, go in Jesus' name. Fear, go. Go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. The Lord wants you to build a, an altar in your life, as it were. Christ Jesus is that altar. Every great revival that ever took place was because there were people like Evan Roberts who said, Lord, I built your altar. I've laid your wood in order according to your word. The sacrifice is ready. Send your fire now. And your life is that sacrifice. That you're willing to live your life as a sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to the Lord. It's all about Him, not about us individually anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just watch what God will do. I'm telling you, He will answer by fire. Oh, rababasi yaramandeki. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the presence, the sweet presence of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this. I want you to feel and experience the sweet presence of Jesus in your life so you'll like it so much you won't ever want to be without it. Hallelujah. We want you to experience the sweet presence of Jesus in your life. I kind of say, He loves you. It doesn't matter. He loves you. I mean, just think about it. If He commended His love, He spared not His own Son, but offered Him up for the sins of us all. Hallelujah. How much shall He also freely buy Him? Through him, give us all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha 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 be filled with the spot of Sirene. Balangajaya. Be chastised. Be changed. Ha. The Lord comes to change you in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. To encourage you. Hallelujah. Sing Lang Dambaya. 
fill you up with every good thing. Get him on Jesus. Fill you up. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Jerizai. Somebody said, can you tell me how to get filled? Yeah. First thing is you should be, begin to be thankful. Somebody said, well, how do I do that? Well, come to Jesus. Because the first thing that's going to happen is if you see him, God the Holy Ghost wants to show you him, Jesus. And when you see him, you're going to get real thankful for him. And then as you get real thankful, listen, I, I, I just, I just want to say this. I want to say this. I don't want anybody leaving here with a yoke upon their life. I don't want anyone leaving here with a yoke. I don't want you leaving here with sickness in your life. I don't want you leaving here with a stomach flu or a virus. I don't want you leaving here with a toe ache, much less a heartache. Won't you let the Lord deliver you? It's not hard. Just be willing to be wrong so he can be right. Just be willing to humble yourself under his mighty hand so he can exalt you. Just be willing to say, I'm going to agree with Father. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to agree with God from here on out. <laughs> That's simple. Listen, why don't you do this? Why don't you just go ahead and do this? Why don't you let God work a miracle for you? Well, why don't you just let God work a financial miracle for you? Why don't you worship God with your tithes and with your offerings? You could worship God, obey God, have a miracle from the Lord all at the same time. Simple acts of obedience. Can everybody hear me? I don't want you to miss this. Simple, simple acts of obedience create the greatest miracles of faith. It goes across every dimension of life. Every situation that anybody on this earth has ever experienced. There is a miracle. There is a miracle provision that is simply waiting your obedience. There is a miracle supply from heaven. Oh, I'm telling you, the gates are open wide for the righteous nation who keeps his word. And I'm telling you, he's made us a holy nation. He's made us a royal priesthood. He's made, made us a highly treasured people. And I pray from this day forward, you'll live like that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them. Come and worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings. Give, give, worship Him, give to Him. Let it be holy. Let it be, let it be something that's sacred to you.